When Lee Riken and I first decided to write A Reader's Guide Through the Wardrobe. It was in response to the many requests that we've had here at the Wade Center over the years from individuals and groups. IVP in turn was influenced by the anticipated release of a movie on The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. And I was delighted by the occasion. People are always looking for help while they're reading so that they can get more out of the reading experience, they can understand it better. The audience for our reader's guide is the adult reader, or probably re-reader, of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe. It can be for someone who's the first time reader to Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, someone who's been reading it for years, a teacher, a pastor. There have been a lot of books written on the Narnian stories, not a lot of books on the individual ones. I would say our book is unique, it's a reader's guide to The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, a whole book on just one of the Narnian stories. What we're doing here is, is something that no one else has done yet, which is to take and look at The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe through the eyes of C.S. Lewis, using his literary theories, his criticism, his approach to reading, and trying to help the readers just simply sit down and enjoy the story and understand it in the way that Lewis himself would have enjoyed the story. The fact that we label our book a reader's guide to Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe means that it is a book designed to move the reader through the individual chapters, always looking at the chapters through a specific lens that I have provided. And we have taken literary devices like plot or characterization and attached them, obviously those go throughout the book, but we've attached them to a particular chapter and tried to give examples. For example, characterization in the story, what might be the focus of a chapter, archetypes in the story, another chapter. After we have conducted our tour of The Lion, the Witch, and the Wardrobe, as we label it, then we have chapters that help explain this phenomenon that we have explored together. Background material, um, critics' response, the history of how the Narnia books were written, a little bit of biography, different uh, sorts of things that especially um, people, as they're reading a book, sometimes say, well, tell me about the author, or how did this book come to be written? Now, having enjoyed the narrative and literary qualities of this book, it would be incomplete not to press on and absorb and think about the religious issues that are embodied in this book. It's the way that uh, Lewis, in, in The Lion, the Witch, and Wardrobe, awakens us to the transcendent reality that's surrounding us that we can't perceive. So I think the right response to The Lion, Witch, and the Wardrobe, whether rereading it or going to see the movie, is really a double response. First to relish the story, then to ponder the deeper religious meanings of it.